Washington State University. Go Cougs! So I'll go ahead and type it up. So we have a variable called temperature, uh, sign at 78. And then we had if temperature is greater than 75, then we print something like it is warm out. Something like that. And then we hit this green play button up here to run this file, run this program. And can I make this bigger? No. There we go. Okay. So hit the green play button over here in the right is your console. This is like the Qt console we had before in its own window. And it's executing this command to run this file, which is this temp.py file. And here's my output here. So if you got it is warm out, then your code's working. Any questions? Did you get yours working? Yeah? Okay. You guys are awesome. All right, so what I want to do for like, let's say the next 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes maybe. Uh, so at the very bottom, basic programming concepts. I want to go through these with you uh, so that you get kind of a sense of the basics. We've already gone through code comments. What's a code comment? Pop quiz. I can't give you a grade, but you can still try. <laughs> What's a code comment? Metadata. What is it? Is it metadata from the yeah, metadata, right? So it's like information about your program, right? Awesome. All right. What's a variable? It's kind of tough. What's a variable? I'll give you a hint. Temperature is an example of a variable, but what is a variable? What did temperature allow us to do? Yeah. Um, it allowed us to assign value to it and evaluate the value and evaluate. Uh, That's good. That's perfect. Assign a value, right? Allows us to store a value. And we've got this nice English label temperature for that value. Perfect. All right. Uh, what does print allow us to do? Perfect. I couldn't have said it better myself. It allows us to output whatever we want to the console, right? So it gives us some insight as to what our program's doing. Perfect. All right. Uh, so we've done a little bit with if statements. So let's finish off our if statements, and then we're going to get user input, and then we're going to use a loop. Uh, and by then, you guys will already know like the first four weeks of an intro to computer science class. So you walk out of here feeling pretty badass. <laughs> All right, so what if temperature is not greater than 75? What if it's like 70? Maybe we want to say something like, it is cool out, right? You could probably figure out how to do that with what you already know, right? How, how could you do that? Write another if statement. Write another if statement, yeah. Uh, so this kind of problem is so common that instead of having to write another if statement, Python will let you just slap an else on an if statement, and this else will be executed whenever the if's condition is false. You guys know your truth tables, right? From philosophy, right? And or not. Uh, all that comes in handy when working with if statements. So the complement of temperature greater than 75, I'll just put a comment here to help me remember, is temperature less than or equal to 75. And whenever that happens, I want to say something like, it is cool out. Maybe I'll make my temperature variable 60 degrees, and I'll run it. And this time, it says, it is cool out.
So else is just a nice way to do something if this condition on an if statement is false. It's not true. Okay, if that's not true, then go do this. And we don't have to say what is the condition that will cause the else to be true. It's the complement, not. And you guys all remember your truth tables, right? All right. So the next thing that I want to do is show you how to get user input. Right now, temperature is always whatever we assign it. We call this hard-coded, right? We have in our code set the value of temperature to be 60. And when our program runs, it can never change. This isn't a very useful program, right? That'd be like if you had, say, an Android or an iOS app for the weather, and it always showed you the weather at the time you installed it. That's what our program does, right? That's not a very good app, right? You wouldn't make money off that app. So instead, that app would probably fetch some content from the web, and you can do that. Here, we're going to fetch our temperature value, our content, from the user. So we're going to say, hey, user, what's the temperature? And I'm going to tell you if it's warm or cold, in case you don't know. So we're going to replace this line here uh, with Python code to get input from the user. And Python is so great that this is almost as easy as just writing input. <laughs> Almost as easy. So notice how input showed up in a purple color. Uh, that's because input means something special in Python. So we'll have input, open paren, close paren. And then in here, we're going to provide some kind of prompt or text to the user. So they know what to input, right? We're going to tell them something like, double quote, please enter the temperature. or whatever prompt you want, as long as it's in double quotes. So this is what's essentially going to be shown to the user. And then Python's going to wait for input from the user. This isn't quite done, uh, but let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. OK. So I run my program. and. Here's my output, and it says, please enter the temperature. Note that I'm not getting any of this output over here yet, because my code is waiting. It's blocking on line 20 right here. It's waiting for the user, and you're the user of your own program. You're the programmer and the user, waiting for the user to type something in. So maybe I'm going to type in 80. It's 80 degrees out. When you're done typing your number, you press Enter to send it to your code. Send it to your program. OK, darn, it crashes. Uh, so it crashes. And this is common. OK, code crashes all the time. Usually, uh, Python will give you some kind of indication why it crashed. So this might be kind of tricky uh, to deduce or, um, deduce or uh, infer right now. So type error, uh, the greater than operator is not supported between instances of string and integer, string and integer. Take a minute and just think about it. I don't expect you to know what that means, but what could that mean? Got an operator and it's saying, I don't know what to do with a string and an integer. Yeah. Um, it's interpreting the number you inputted as a word essentially instead of an integer or a number. Perfect, exactly. This value 80 right here, when I press enter, is being sent to my program as a word, as text. It's not in my program as an integer numeric value. So we can't compare like a word 80 to an integer 75. So we've got to explicitly in our program convert this word into an integer. And it's pretty easy to do. Go ahead and just surround your whole input statement with int open paren. And let me make this a little bigger. And close paren. So essentially, this whole input statement is going to be converted into an integer. It's kind of what that says. And then run your program again. Try 80 this time. And now it says 
it is warm out. But if I try this again, and maybe I'll enter a value less than or equal to 75, maybe I'll enter in 75, it says it's cool out because of that if statement and the else. All right, you guys are doing great. Let's take a little brain break. What questions do you have so far? Uh, so I run my program and, uh, you'll have to click on the console to get this cursor. Do you see this cursor right here? Oh. So click over here, oh. uh, and then type your value like 75 and then press enter. Oh. Did that work? Other questions while she's working on that? That's common. Don't worry about it. Jason's like, story of my life, right? <laughs> if something's wrong, like let's say instead of um, 75, I type 75, okay? Uh, this crashes, okay? This is a bug. Programs crash all the time. And that's kind of what makes programming, I would say, frustrating sometimes, right? It's fun to build all these cool software pieces, uh, but you got to test them really well. Right. I'm sure you guys have used apps and programs that have crashed, right? That's because whatever team of programmers developed that software didn't test it very well. Uh, so we're not writing very robust code right now. Uh, but you can see how this could be a problem, right? If we don't tell the user you have to enter an integer, numeric integer, then typing 75, they might think that's okay. Right? And it crashed our program. Okay. You guys are good? Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. All right, time for challenge two. So go ahead and get five integers from the user, then compute and display their average. That sounds like a lot, but you guys know everything you need to know to do this. 